In honor of Holy Thursday, I wanted to read to you something that I read every Holy Thursday that I think is absolutely beautiful. It was taken from a discourse by Patricia Raub. And it's based on the Gospel of Mark 14, 12 to 16. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. And so on this night, we remember something that happened so very long ago. We remember something that happened far away. Most of us have never been there and never will be. Nevertheless, we remember. We remember that on that night, Jesus and his friends went all, were also gathered to remember. They gathered for a Passover meal, which is exactly the feast of remembering. Like us, they were gathered around a table and sitting in a circle. Like us, they were telling the story of their faith as we do now. Like us, they were calling to mind the saving acts of God. They remembered God being with them in steadfast love, even as their people were treated harshly and enslaved. They remembered God leading their ancestors in faith out of slavery and turning their bitter burden into sweet freedom. And as they dipped the vegetables in salt water, to remind them of their tears. And as they ate the sweet fruit to remind them of their joys, they were pulling it all together. That's what remember means. To put something back together, we remember. Something that was scattered becomes whole. What was many becomes one. And so they remembered together, Jesus and his friends, their identity as God's covenant people. Peter was there as well as his brother, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Simon, who was later called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas, Iscariot. Also, of course, there were women who were there who prepared this supper. The ones who were neither named nor mentioned. Many believe Mary Magdalene was present as she was much loved by Jesus. They were all there to remember they were there to remember God's grace saving act. They were there in a sense to remember who they were. And then Jesus did the inexplicable. While they were sitting, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take this, this is my body. This was not the first time Jesus had taken bread and blessed it. 
and broken it and given to the people to eat. But those other times, he did it for great crowds. Here in this large upstairs room, somewhere in Jerusalem, Jesus did it for his friends, the people he so loved. He did it for a group of people who, from the beginning of their time together, mostly didn't understand what he was doing and where they were going or foresee the end of the journey of Jesus's time on earth. On this night, Jesus broke the bread with a level of confidence that this was in fact the last supper that he would share with them. On this night at this meal, the meaning of the bread was predetermined. Matzah, the bread eaten at the Passover Seder is called the bread of affliction or adversity. The matzah reminds us of the suffering of the slaves in Egypt. But on that night, Jesus tells his friends he is the bread. He will suffer. He will be broken. Then scripture tells us Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood or the new covenant. Again, Jesus has taken the night of remembering and done something new and electrifying, inexplicable and unexpected. At the Seda, wine is drunk in blessing and celebration and abundance. And the sharing of it is meant to show freedom and majesty. And then, after passing around the wine, Jesus says, this is my blood, explaining that his life will be poured out in much the same way as the life of the Passover lamb. Jesus joins with his friends to remember, to celebrate the Passover, a meal that resonates at the heart of their identity as Jews. At the same time, Jesus interprets the bread and wine of that meal in a way that forms the heart of our identity. Those in the upper room were putting it back together. That is what we are here to remember. We are putting it back together in remembering what was scattered becomes whole. What was many becomes one. At that table, we remember that Jesus spoke of his body being broken like a piece of bread, and he spoke of his life being poured out like a cup of wine. We see in Jesus, God's love is poured out like a never-ending cup of wine. We see in Jesus, God's presence comes to us, our daily bread. Bread for the journey, we see in Jesus God's acts with love and power. And the goal, again, is joy and freedom. All these things we see when we remember. When what was scattered in our history becomes whole, when what was many, that would be us, becomes one. Like Jesus and his friends, we are together. And we tell the story of our faith and we call God to mind at this time. After the meal, those in the room sang as they remembered as we do now. And just a prayer. The bread is broken for you, dear God, broken for our nourishment, broken so that everyone will have their fill, 
broken because that's the only way bread can be shared. Broken so that the one loaf is many pieces. Broken, but still one loaf. And in doing so, as we take bread with others on this night, we remember. As we drink from the cup of wine, we remembered that life, like the life of Christ, the wine is blessed. And we are blessed with the life of healing and blessings and courage on this Holy Thursday. Imagine Jesus at the table with his disciples. Remember him breaking the bread and sharing it and sharing the wine from his cup. Remember him humbling himself and washing their feet in pure love. And then remember his agony in the garden when he was alone and frightened. Until the resurrection. God bless you all.